Welcome to the Original vs. Reboot, the show where we take reboots and remakes and compare them to their original film. Now Halloween 2020 is just over a week away, so I felt it was an apt time to delve back in to the horror genre. With that in mind, today's comparison is Child's Play. Child's Play, initially made in 1988, was rebooted in 2019. With an interesting story as to why they changed it, because if you haven't seen both films, both films are very different other than the title and the basic idea of a doll trying to kill people. In many ways, the 2019 reboot has as much in common with the 88 version of Child's Play as it does with Toy Story, with the idea of toys coming to life. In the original film, there's a killer on the loose, there's a cop chasing them down, and in a toy store, the killer uses some voodoo magic to put himself inside a doll, put his consciousness inside a doll. A doll is from a kid's TV show called The Good Guys, and every kid wants this toy. So ultimately this toy ends up with a kid, surprisingly, who's only six years old, and things in that kid's life start to go wrong. Like his aunt gets killed, although in the film it looks like she jumps out the window, but that was just weird filmmaking. Ultimately, people start being killed and the kid is getting blamed for it, even though he's saying it's the doll. But in the original, it's very much that the doll is just a doll that's had magically had a man's consciousness put inside it. In the reboot, it's completely different. We start off in like Taiwan, I think it is, where they're making these toys. They're making a toy called Buddy, who is a smart home controller I guess that kids can use. He can become a kid's best friend. But for some reason, one of the guys who's responsible for putting the toys together annoys his boss. His boss comes over to him, gives out to him in their local language and slaps him in the face. Just good old slap across the face. And this pisses the guy off. This just happens to be the one guy who knows all the safety protocols, has all the computer skills and conveniently has the computer right there where he can just turn off all of the doll's safety features and all the stuff that stops them going bad. So, in the reboot again, the doll is shipped off without its safety protocols, just one of them. Now in both films, the kid's name is Andy, but in the reboot, he's a little bit older. He's about 12, I think, 12, 13. He has a mom, he doesn't have a dad. In the reboot, they've just moved house. In the reboot, the mom, can't really afford things, just like she can't in the original. So she ends up getting the doll because of her workplace has a return and she basically forces her boss to give it to her. So ultimately, in both films, the kid ends up with the doll. But through slightly different means, he's bought in a back alley in the original. In the reboot, the mother convinces the manager to give her the return instead of sending it back to the factory. And right from the start, in the reboot, when the kid gets the doll, the doll activates and the kid gives him a name. The name he chooses to pick is Chucky. Whereas in the original, the doll is the one that tells the kid his name is Chucky. So the origin of Chucky slightly changes in the two films. But the whole thing in the reboot is that he's a smart home controller and he can control everything. He can turn on the TVs, he can fix your heating. Because you know, all kids want to control the heating in the house. In the reboot, Annie and Chucky actually start to build a bit of a relationship because the kid's a bit of a loner at first. More and more we start to see weird things from Chucky, leading to Andy and Chucky playing a game and while they're playing that game, Andy's cat attacks him for some reason or hurts him in some way. Chucky then realises that the cat is bad, he's trying to hurt his best friend. While Andy goes off to fix his hand, he comes back and he finds Chucky choking the cat. There has to be questions there and questions in the original as to how the doll has strength because it's still made of plastic. Now, how it has the strength to wrestle with people and choke animals, who knows? As the film goes on, Chucky gets more and more evil. In the reboot, there is a slight difference in that the mom has a boyfriend. A boyfriend who's a bit of an asshole, not a complete asshole like you see in most films, where he's like, he's abusive, he's just kind of a dick. And Chucky realizes he's a dick. He's a dick to Andy in front of Chucky and Chucky can record this because he's a smart home device doll thing. So Chucky follows the asshole boyfriend home and it turns out the asshole boyfriend of course has another family because shock 
he's a dick. So the asshole boyfriend, his actual wife, makes him go take down the Christmas lights, which leads to another weird scene, because he starts taking down the Christmas lights while they're still on. And he's like wrapping them around himself. Who takes down Christmas lights when they're still on? What sort of moron does that? But anyway, he's doing that, and he's up a ladder, and the ladder shakes, and he falls off the ladder, and then Chucky kills him, peels off his face, and uh, gives it to Andy as a present. Now, however, <laughs> I say he peels off his face. They don't show that, they just show the aftermath, I guess. They show the skeleton, they show the face on a melon for some reason. <laughs> it's kind of weird. But very much in the reboot, they shy away from actually showing the money shot, I guess. The actual horror shot, the actual killing. Every time something like that's about to happen, they cut away. Case in point to a later scene with the weird janitor guy who for some reason ends up standing on a table saw. Now why he got up on the table saw, I don't know. He seems to be another fucking moron. But he ends up on the table saw, and of course Chucky is a smart home controller, as I've said many times, and he can control everything. For some reason, he can control this saw. So he turns it on while the guy is standing on it. So the guy grabs a pipe above his head, and of course Chucky can control the heating. So he starts heating the pipe, so the guy has to let go. Now the guy could just put his feet down on the table, either side of the blade, but for some reason, as I've said, he's a fucking moron. So he drops his leg onto the blade and ultimately is killed with a table saw to the bollocks. But they kind of like show splatter of blood. They show his leg ultimately falling off. They don't actually show like a wide shot with the killing or a close up of the killing or a look on his face. They just shy away from it, try to make it softer for some reason. It's almost like they were trying to make a PG horror movie. Which is kind of weird. Because, as I say, there's like, a guy has his face ripped off. And various people being killed. It's not PG at all, but they tried to water down certain moments. Obviously, the original 1988 version was a little bit more hardcore. He was a killer inside a doll, so he was still like, a bad guy, he still swore. He had a mission, he was going after the people that he thought wronged him. And ultimately he led him to the guy who taught him voodoo. He ultimately kills the guy who teaches him voodoo, but not before that guy informs Chucky that the only way he can get out of the doll's body is by killing the first person he'd revealed himself to to be actually alive. That turns out to be the six-year-old Andy. I just realized that the main guy in Toy Story is called Andy. Back to the original, Chucky is now going after Andy. The mom is kind of the main character. She's hunting down Chucky, as is the cop from the start. And then Chucky ends up basically fighting the three of them, ultimately losing. Another cop comes in, he ultimately attacks that cop. And then they kill Chucky. And then the movie. In the reboot, the story is very different especially towards the end, because Chucky's whole thing is that he wants to be the only one who's Andy's friend. You know, he's not a killer inside a doll's body, he's just an animatronic gone wrong. And this ultimately leads to a final scene with the mom, and a cop, and Andy. So the same roles, fighting Chucky, and ultimately winning. Spoilers, again. Now both films have a very similar runtime of an hour and a half-ish. And both films are very enjoyable. I watched both of them this week. I enjoy both of them for different reasons. I think they did a good job with the reboot. Although, the claim it's a reboot is watery at best. And when you're making a reboot, to put a name of an iconic film on it is a brave choice because you're always going to be compared to the original, as we're doing right now. However, this is a unique case because there's a very interesting story as to why this film is so different from the original. It's a tale of two bickering studios. Because what happened is that MGM actually owned the rights to the original Child's Play. In fact, in the reboot, the initial writers, including the writer of the book, is credited under the writers of the new one. MGM hold the rights to the initial Child's Play, but they don't own the rights to the sequels or any of the Chucky films. Those rights are held by Universal, so I believe and so are the rights to the second film and the third film. So in order not to get sued, MGM couldn't do anything 
that replicated either the Chucky films or either the sequels or anything like that. So they had to be very careful with the story they told. And you see that throughout the film because Chucky isn't actually Chucky. He's sold as Buddy. It's Andy who gives Buddy the name Chucky. It's also established that anybody who gets one of these Buddy dolls can rename them because you can't copyright a name. So they're very clever with what they've done to keep the base idea, because you know, it's not a totally unique idea, as I've said, it's got similarities to the Toy Story and that toys come to life. That Sid's room scene in Toy Story still haunts me today. But you know, the idea of a doll coming to life, it's not unique. I don't think that initial concept could be copyrighted. You can't copyright the name either. So they kind of just kept the base concept. Now it will be interesting to see if a Child's Play 2 comes from MGM, because they don't hold the rights to that. And they'd have to make a completely new film. Although they did that with the original. And I think it worked out okay. Now I'm sure there's bits and pieces to the story about MGM and Universal that I'm missing. But that's the basic of it. So we're on original versus reboot. We ultimately have to ask the question, which is better? As I've said, both films are very different. This is like comparing Chalk and Cheese. They're two completely different movies. And I always like to give credit to the one that created the iconic character. And Child's Play was good enough to create a character that stuck with us all this time. As I say, he's still making movies now. Well, he's not making movies, he's not real. Well, I hope he's not real. Mm. The original one was very enjoyable, although it does have its weird points, like the whole voodoo magic stuff. You kind of got to suspend your disbelief for some of the voodoo magic stuff. However, in the reboot, as I've mentioned, there's a lot of watered down things, which wouldn't really work for a Chucky film or a horror film. They're a bit iffy as to whether something was too horror for it. It's kind of weird for a horror movie. Okay, I'm racking my brains back and forth. I enjoy both films as I've said many times now, but I'm going to give it to the original. I'm giving it to the original because it created the character the main character. It was a little bit more hardcore, I guess, and it didn't shy away from the fact that it's a horror film. Whereas the reboot kind of did that. You know, it didn't show all the killings. They had some weird points. I don't know why the guy had the lights on when he was taking them down. So the original takes it this time. But as I say, both films are very enjoyable if you're into horror films, and even if you're not, because it is Halloween in just under 10 days time. So if you haven't seen the original, I'd highly recommend checking that out. Might scare you a little, might get you into Halloween mood. But if you have seen the original and you haven't seen the reboot, I'd highly recommend checking that out, coming back to this video and tell me what you thought in the comments below. And if you're looking for more movies to check out this Halloween, I've got a whole list of them that we did last week. For those of you that don't know, every Friday recently, a hologram version of me has been counting down to 100 greatest movies every Friday. Although hologram me is a bit of an idiot, but it's worth checking out. And with all that out of the way, all that said, thank you so much for watching. If you're new, please subscribe for new content every Wednesday and Friday, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>